In the last video, we defined a conservative vector field to be a gradient field of some um, potential function, lowercase f. In this video, we'll talk about determining if a vector field, capital F, is conservative or not. Let capital F equal m of xyzi plus n of xyzj plus p of xyzk be a field on a connected and simply connected domain whose component functions have continuous first partial derivatives. So component functions are m, n, and p, and they all have to have continuous first partial derivatives with respect to x, y, and z. Then capital F is conservative if and only if partial p partial y equals partial n partial z, partial m partial z equals partial p partial x, and partial n partial x equals partial m partial y. So what that's saying is the derivative of the k component with respect to y has to equal the derivative of the j component with respect to z. The middle one is the derivative of the i component with respect to z has to equal the derivative of the k component with respect to x. And the last equality is saying the derivative of the j component with respect to x equals the derivative of the i component with respect to y. So if all three of those equalities hold, then your field is conservative. The two-dimensional case is capital F equals m of xyi plus n of xyj, and it simplifies the partial derivatives to partial n partial x equals partial m partial y. So it's just that, um, that i and j component criteria if you have a two-dimensional vector field. Now the proof of this statement uses the mixed derivative theorem which tells us that under these circumstances mixed second order partial derivatives are equal so if capital F was a gradient field then M, N, and P would already be first order partial derivatives of some potential function lowercase f and so these partial derivatives that we have in our definition would actually be second derivatives of our potential function f. And so that's why our proof would use the mixed derivative theorem for second order partial derivatives. Practice. <clears throat> Determine if the field capital F equals 3x squared minus 2y squared i plus 4xy plus zj plus y minus 1k is conservative or not conservative. So first, to use my definition, I'm going to identify m, n, and p. m is the i component, n is the j component, and p is the k component. So there's m, n, and p. And now my definition for um, telling whether my field is conservative is partial p partial y equals partial n partial z. Partial m partial z equals partial p partial x. And partial n partial x equals partial m partial y. So we will start with our p, which is y minus 1. If I take the derivative of that with respect to y, I get 1. Now n is 4xy plus z. If I take the partial derivative of n with respect to z, I also get 1. Those two are equal, and so my first criteria is met. 
Now I want my m function, which is attached to the i component, so 3x squared minus 2y squared. The derivative with respect to z is 0 because I have no z component in there, so 0. And p is y minus 1. The derivative of that with respect to x is 0 because there is no x um, variable in that function. So those two are equal. My second criteria is met. Now partial n partial x, I'm going to treat the 4y and the z like constants. And so derivative of x is 1, so I just get 4y. Partial m partial y is going to be negative 4y. So the, the y squared becomes 2y, and it's multiplied by a negative 2, so negative 4y. These are not equal, and because of that, since partial n partial x does not equal partial m partial y, the field capital F is not conservative, meaning there is no potential function that would have the um, capital F as its gradient. Here's our second practice. Determine if the field capital F equals y sine of z i plus x sine of z j plus x y cosine of z k is conservative or not conservative. So here's my m, n, and p, the i, j, and k components respectively, and my criteria partial p partial y equals partial n partial z, partial m partial z equals partial p partial x, and partial n partial x equals partial m partial y. So let's start with p, x, y, cosine of z. If I take the derivative of that with respect to y, then I get x cosine z. n is x sine z, derivative with respect to z is going to be x cosine z, so those are equal, we're good. Second criteria, m is y sine z, derivative of that with respect to z is y cosine z. p is x y cosine z, derivative with respect to x is y cosine z, so those are equal. Third criteria, n is x sine z, derivative with respect to x is just going to be sine z. m is y sine z, derivative with respect to y is just going to be sine z. So those are equal. So all three of our um, partial derivative equations are valid, and so f is conservative.